Hi, hope you're all doing good. So before I proceed with discussion, in the previous part, part 11, based on the inputs you gave, updated additional information in the description part of that video, do check it out, right? And coming to the first question in this video, starting with renal function assessment, so you might be having confusion like is it blood urea nitrogen or serum creatinine? Serum creatinine is considered to be more accurate for the following reasons. So review the following literature. As you can see, blood urea estimation is commonly used to assess renal function. Elevation of blood urea level is associated with several disorders which may be pre-renal and post-renal. Estimation of serum creatine is considered to be more reliable indicator for evaluation of kidney function. Why is it so? Just go through the following literature, you'll understand the reason, right? Now let's move on to the next question. HPV associated with cervical cancer. I'm not sure what the question is in specific, but anyways, go through the following information and see if it is useful. Or else, let me know. I'll update additional information accordingly. So as you can see, human papillomavirus, group of viruses that are extremely common worldwide. So there are hundreds and hundreds of types of HPV viruses. However, two HPV types, 16 and 18, cause 70% of cervical cancers and precancerous cervical lesions, right? Now, moving on to the next question. Ball burnisher, so you're all telling me that an image was posted and they asked you to identify the part of the instrument, right? So as you can see, we have different parts of hand instrument, which include blade, shank and handle. Most hand instruments, regardless of use, are composed of three parts as we discussed now. And for many non-cutting instruments, the part corresponding to the blade is termed nib, NIB. And the end of the nib or the working surface is known as face. The blade or nib is a working end of instrument and is connected to the handle by shank, right? Now let's move on to the next question, squads, period retrievers, which we discussed previously in our study club as well. So as you can see, these are squads, period retrievers. So they are set of two double-ended, highly magnetized instruments designed for retrieval of broken instrument tips from the periodontal pocket. They are indispensable when the clinician has broken a curate tip, either in a furcation or deep pocket. So you can see squads, period retriever tip designs. The long blade is for general use in pockets and the contra-angle tip is for use in furcation areas. Right. Moving on to the next question. So I'm not sure whether this was asked or not because previously we discussed about GG action, gate clearance action. So anyways, I found this keyword in your comments as well. So I'm including this in discussion. Piezoremer cutting action. So as you can see, these are GG drills and piezoremers. So GG drills we discussed in one of the uh, previous discussion videos. Piezoremers, the piezoremer has long, sharp flutes connected to a thick shaft. It cuts laterally and is primarily used for preparation of pore space when gut aperture has to be removed from the obturated root canal. Both gate slid drills and piezo removers are made of stainless steel. These aggressive cutting instruments are inflexible and should be used at slow speed in contra-angled engine driven handpiece and with extreme caution to prevent over instrumentation and perforations. Right, moving on to the next question. Demergence classification. So as you can see, we have a classification, demergence classification of third molars. So third molars are classified according to their developmental stages. So the first one you can see cusp tips are mineralized. Second, mineralized cusps are united. Third, crown is about half formed. Four, crown formation is complete. Five, formation of interradicular bifurcation has begun and root length is less than the crown length. Six, root length is at least as great as crown length and roots have funnel shaped endings. Seven, root walls are parallel but apices remain open. Eight, apical ends of roots are completely closed. So let me know if the question is related to these developmental stages or you need any additional information, do let me know. Now moving on to the next question, analgesic, which analgesic is not given in case of peptic ulcer, it's all about contraindication. So as you can see and if you review literature, 
Aspirin is contraindicated in patients who are sensitive to it and in peptic ulcer, including indomethacin, which is ulcerogenic, as you know. And also, propionic acid derivatives like ibuprofen should be avoided in peptic ulcer patients, right? Again, if you have any additional uh, options, let me know. We'll include them in the discussion by incorporating additional information in the description part of the video. Now, moving on to the next question, bleaching agent mechanism of action so we have a generalized mechanism of action which is mentioned in Grossman as you can see right so just review this literature and see if this is useful uh, in answering your question right so the principal mechanism involved in bleaching is that the oxidizing agent reaches the sites within enamel and dentin to allow a chemical reaction to occur between the discolored segment and the active ingredient. So there is basically a redox reaction as you can see. So tooth is a reducing agent which takes up electrons. Bleaching agent is the oxidizing agent which gives free electrons. So free reactive radicals react with unsaturated bonds and larger strain molecules are converted into small ones and then simple molecules are formed as a consequence which reflect less light or become colorless moving on to the next question tingling sensation in peripheries so I think diabetes mellitus is given as one of the options you can go for it as you can see complications of diabetes you have peripheral neuropathy which is sensory loss and motor weakness so what are the symptoms of this peripheral neuropathy so usually in peripheries like feet legs hands and arms the patient might feel like burning sensation or tingling sensation like pins and needles numbness there could be pain or even weakness right and finally extraocular muscles clinical oriented question again i'm not sure what the question is in specific uh, so do let me know we'll update additional information if needed so as you can see we have various extraocular muscles and their functions and most importantly we have these exceptions in nerve supply lr6 so4 rest of the extraocular muscles supplied by oculomotor now so i think the question was like uh, damage to which now leads to a particular clinical presentation of eyeball so i'm not sure what the question is in specific so let me know we'll update that accordingly in the description part of the video right so these are some of the topics which i wanted to highlight in this specific video so do let me know if you need any additional information we'll update that accordingly in the description part of the video for sake of your convenience and clarity i hope it's clear wish you all the best love you all